Label Expo Americas 2014, and I'm with Mike Ferrari. He is the founder and owner of Ferrari Innovation Solutions. He has a long-standing experience working in the consumer packaging market, and uh, we're just here to talk a little bit more about how technology has advanced in the label industry and how it's improving uh, engagement with consumers on the shelf. And uh, if Mike wants to tell us maybe a little bit about how uh, a little bit about shopper behavior. Oh yes, well Danielle, there's a lot that has happened in the uh, last year since we last met. Uh, certainly we've seen uh, shoppers continue to go online and on the go. Uh, and while doing that, really interacting, and there's been, there have been a few brands uh, that we'll talk about that have uh, really spread their wings with regards to connecting consumers through packaging and the use of digital printing in order to be engaged across all media. And that's what's important. Excellent. I mean, do you have a couple of examples that you wanted to share maybe with us, some Certainly. impacting impacting campaigns? Certainly. Well, most notably the uh, one that has gone to 50 countries and really gone across uh, all media has been the Coca-Cola campaign most recently launching in the U.S. and in Mexico. And you see, this is a campaign that is not only on the bottles in the retail shelves, but it is also on uh, Twitter, it's also on Facebook, it's interacting, and it's all through the changes that are possible with digital printing that allow the cross-media campaigns to go on. Excellent. I don't know if I told you this, but at our Wisconsin State Fair, there was actually a, a share a Coke kiosk where uh, attendees to the State Fair were able to go in, put in the exact name that they wanted for themselves, um, a name for a friend that they wanted to share a, a can of Coke with, and right then and there they had the labels printed live with their custom names, and uh, they were able to go off and share it. I thought it was rather guerrilla marketing. Very neat. <laughs> It is guerrilla marketing, and that's a great example because that really elevates the experience and uh, makes it a fun time when people see their names and they cling, cling uh, drinks together. Uh, I was at a party this year, and every guest coming to the party had a bottle that was in, in the uh, cooler. Uh, so that, that makes it experience. But you see how that really changes and the story continues to live from the virtual world onto the physical world of packaging. Excellent, and, and digital printing is a tool for that. Um, we had our strategy meeting yesterday, and, and Mike Fairley was saying that you know he really is considering digital printing to be a mainstream technology in the labels market at the moment. It's really only about five percent of the global market by volume. However, uh, the value that that digital printing brings to the marketplace is significantly higher. Did you want to just maybe talk a little bit about that? Oh, abs absolutely, and I think that's right. If you measure if you measure that uh, through the value. Uh, then value is clearly mainstream because that's the only way brands are growing is by having different campaigns, different uh, ways to engage consumers. So by um, allowing the label uh, to connect with other media, other uh, online or Twitter or Facebook, then you suddenly have a bigger proposition, something that's not possible with analog printing. That's where the value comes from. And it gives an opportunity to maybe capture shoppers who are only shopping online if there's an exclusive product that has really funky packaging and that speaks to them to get them to come into the store and do some shopping. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're not seeing it um, uh, only, again, with Coca-Cola, but uh, I think uh, another great one that tied social media together was Danone Yogurt uh, overseas. Uh, Nutella also had uh, a very different type of personalization, but yet a fun uh, thing to do. So you, you're starting to see some very good marketing companies take the leap and get into connecting their brands across the media channels so that uh, they can have that additional storytelling uh, across where the consumers are today. And, and all the different touch points where, where the consumers are playing. So we're actually here in the Smart Mart, which is a new feature area here at Label Expo. Uh, we're showing some demonstrations on augmented reality, uh, RFID, uh, NFC, and um, that definitely is, is something that relates very closely to digital printing. There's some serious opportunities to combine the two the two different technologies. Absolutely. Um, the digital printing is one of the greatest enablers. It has now connected with um, augmented reality, as you mentioned, uh, so the ability to then even change what is on the package so that you come up with a different 3D video uh, on each package is now also possible. Uh, having 
uh, old and stale videos just has an endpoint to it. So you have to keep those fresh, and that's what digital printing can do. Uh, but then it's it's uh, the connect points are not just augmented reality. We've seen it in workflow. I think there's a big story there with um, digital finishing now. Uh, we've seen that in labels come around with automated software so that you have a total automated workflow now. And, and now digital printing is, is really starting to bleed into the flexible packaging and the folding carton market as well. Yes, it is. Uh, what an exciting year. This has been uh, 2014. HP launches wide format presses. They're in operation. We're starting to see those take root and starting to see some production, the early production on shelves. So I, I think this, this is just the beginning now of really opening that door that was there with label uh, printing uh, into the flexible market as well as bigger pouches as well as uh, luxury folding cartons. So we're going to see great things by the end of this calendar year on the shelf. Excellent. I know one of the other trends that we often talk about is uh, the idea that you know commercial printers are really looking for growth. And labels and packaging, that's the place to find that growth. And so we're definitely anticipating to see uh, some of the dynamics in the marketplace change a little bit as some of these guys with um, bigger revenue streams are looking to get into, get into our market. Well, I think that brings up two points, Danielle. Uh, first, uh, mergers and acquisitions have, have continued, and I, I see that continuing through 2014 and, and, and to 2015. Bigger players are looking to packaging. The 4 to 6% growth in, in the U.S. on packaging is uh, something that people want a piece of. Uh, secondly, the thing that's exciting is that uh, for those uh, printers that have 10, HP Indigo 10,000 presses, mm -hmm. it's such a vers versatile press that allows them not only to do their commercial print, but also their folding carton printing, and we're starting to see that happening. Very interesting. So certainly the conversation around digital printing and the labels market and the printed packaging market has evolved uh, quite quite well over the last year and it looks like there's there's lots more to go in in the coming years it certainly is excellent well thank you for your time and have a great time with the show hi there i'm in the smart mart at label expo americas 2014 and i'm here with chip tonkin he's with clemson university and he's going to talk to us about the technology that they're featuring here in the smart mart hi i'm director of the snoco institute of packaging design and graphics at uh, clemson university um, the idea of this institute is to really take technologies and, um, and methods that are across different disciplines, so graphics, packaging science, engineering, materials, and, and really combine them to, um, to leverage that to, to, to push the packaging field forward. And what we have here is eye tracking. The idea is to, um, to be able to measure what you design and what its impact on the consumer's behavior is. And normally we do that with subjective ways. We, we, you know, we do surveys, we do focus groups. But that's really soft, subjective information. It's useful, um, but with eye tracking, we can actually measure what a consumer looked at, how long they looked at it, what order they looked at it. So we can analyze that data statistically to really draw conclusions about what type of packaging worked. Um, was it effective in and the message that the designer wanted um, to convey? Um, so it's really a nice way, it's not a nice way, it's an effective way of measuring a package objectively instead of uh, the subjective ways that we normally do it. And how are brand owners and designers responding to technologies like this? Are, are you seeing a lot of interest? Are they trying to use these tools to their advantage? I, I think a lot of the larger brand owners have been doing this for quite a while. They don't talk about it much. I think they see it as a competitive advantage. Um, so, so academic institutions like ours kind of have to learn it from scratch. Um, so, so I think the big players have been doing it. Um, we're getting a lot of interest from kind of I would call the second tier, the private brands, um, a lot of the regional guys. We've really helped a lot of those guys come, come to market and be much more effective, I think, than they would have been otherwise. In competing against the international brands than the national ones. That's what we try to do. Excellent. So I see a lot of different kinds of packaging in here. There's some labels, there's some flexible packages and cartons, um, lots of different colors. Are there some specific things that are pulled out from the data? color, design, what are some of the? Well, I guess I wouldn't want you to draw conclusions from what we had here. This is kind of a mock setup, just uh, more of a technology de demonstration. Um, what, what we find in our studies, it's, a very, it's very segment dependent. So a segment like detergent, for instance, just gets dominated by a player like Tide, where everything revolves around Tide. 
Whereas another segment like olive oil, we did a study with a, um, a small regional olive oil um, producer. Um, nobody in this country, at least, knows what olive oil is supposed to be. They're not familiar with what a, a good um, brand of olive oil is. So you're really starting from scratch. So, so then design cues really play a much r larger role. So I, I can't really give you, you know, a takeaway on a you know, general, you know, red is, well, obviously orange, maybe a, a, you know, a much better color to use. <laughs> okay, um, Clemson. <laughs> Um, but but there's not there's not you really have to understand your segment and your competitions um, in order to stand out. Very interesting. I mean, have you done much studies around you know maybe a pressure sensitive label versus a cotton stack label, something that has foil or embossing on it versus something that's more plain? We have. We've done some. Um, we're actually in the middle of a study um, with some foil stamping, looking at what foil stamping does to purchase behavior. Um, we've done some with shrink versus pressure sensitive. Um, we've done. Um, a little bit with plastic versus uh, like a, um, a clamshell versus a folding carton. Okay. And, and I would say you can find certain segments where you can draw conclusions about what works better than others, mm -hmm. but it, it's not universal. Even with foil stamping, it wasn't universal across all the different segments we tried. I think people have certain perceptions about what a brand or a segment should be as far as, you know, should it be flashy and shiny or should it be more value-oriented, um, and, and you, you have to play off that in your package design. Very interesting. I'm definitely looking forward to, to doing the test myself and seeing where uh, where my eyes are, are being directed to when I come through the aisles. Me too. Awesome. Well, thank you. Have a wonderful show. Thank you.